Okay, so uh, thank you for the introduction and also uh, many thanks uh, to the organizers for uh, putting together this great workshop and for inviting me to, to give a presentation here. So I find it uh, really inspiring here to, to, to listen to so many interesting talks by uh, real pioneers of, of uh, wavelet theory. Um, so, of course, I am not in a position to talk about uh, the history of, of, of the last 30 years of wavelets. So, um, I will try to, to discuss um, some perspectives for uh, future research directions in uh, computational harmonic analysis with a focus on numerics. And uh, more precisely, I will, I will present some uh, recent and ongoing work on using richlets, which are a, somehow a derivative of, of wavelets in order to discretize uh, certain transport equations. So um, here is the outline of my talk. So I will uh, start with a motivation. I will uh, quickly also repeat some things that Albert has, has talked about in his presentation. Um, then I will uh, focus on a problem of, of solving uh, kinetic transport equations. And I will show that um, using a richlet discretization in space for these particular type of problems yields optimal algorithms. I will then show some numerical experiments which, which confirm this uh, theoretical result. And if time permits, I will also very briefly talk about uh, some recent work which is somehow related to this project where we discuss uh, numerical discretizations of the Boltzmann equation. Okay, okay so let's start with the motivation. Um, of course, uh, as we all know, wavelets are a standard tool in, in, in signal processing, but also uh, they have had some successes in uh, solving partial differential equations. Um, so in, for, in the form of, of adaptive algorithms for elliptic partial differential equations. And um, in recent years in the signal processing community, many new constructions, many derivatives of wavelets have, have popped up. For instance, shearlets, curvelets, alpha modulation frames, wave atoms, and so on. And the question that I would like to ask is, can these, these new discretization concepts, can they be used in numerics? Can they be used to discretize certain classes of PDEs and achieve results that cannot be achieved by, say, finite element type discretizations? And in this talk, I will just uh, try to, to uh, present a, a very small first step into this direction. So let me start by just giving a very brief uh, review of, of wavelet methods for elliptic PDEs. So for simplicity, let's consider Laplace equation with uh, variational form. So that's the standard way to, to, to the standard way to discretize the uh, elliptic operator equation is to, to derive a variational form. And um, essentially, when you when you try to uh, discretize this problem, you wind up with a linear system. And um, one way to discretize this linear system is using a wavelet basis. So if we consider a wavelet Riesz basis, which is stable in H1, which means that the H1 Sobolev norm can be characterized by a weighted L2 norm on the transform coefficients, then one can uh, one can make an ansatz, one can write the solution function u and the test function v in terms of this wavelet basis. Um, 
do a diagonal preconditioning, so just uh, insert these weights from these norm equivalents, and then it's, it's quite an easy exercise that just using this, this diagonal preconditioning, one gets a uniformly bounded and boundedly invertible operator on little l2. So one gets a well-conditioned problem, and we get this uh, discrete formulation, and basically one has to solve an infinite dimensional linear system with a well-conditioned matrix, and then one can reconstruct back the desired solution. And um, if we want to solve a well-conditioned linear system, one, uh, the most obvious thing to do is to, to uh, use iterative methods. And uh, for instance, a damped Richardson iteration, and one can show that this actually converges linearly to the, uh, to the desired solution. But uh, we are dealing here with infinite uh, dimensional vectors and matrices. So um, from a numerical point of view, this is infeasible. But if, we, if a wavelet basis is sufficiently nice, one can show that this matrix is not uh, sparse, but it has sufficient off-diagonal decay such that one can replace this matrix vector, this infinite dimensional matrix vector multiplication with a finite dimensional approximate matrix vector multiplication and um, with a negligible error and uh, using this uh, reduction to the finite dimensional setting one can uh, device optimal algorithms for solving, for instance, Laplace equation or elliptic PDEs. Yeah. More precisely, if we consider nonlinear approximation spaces, which are uh, defined by, the, by function as the functions u, which are in H1, and which satisfy a certain n-term approximation rate, then by a fundamental result, by uh, Albert Cohen, Damen and De Voor, one can actually um, construct an algorithm which uh, has a budget of n flops, n arithmetic operations, and which computes in, in this number of arithmetic operations a, a, an approximate solution which satisfies the same n-term approximation rate as the unknown solution u. So, so in particular, one gets an optimally convergent uh, algorithm. And in addition, typical singularities of elliptic problems, at least in 2D, have, so their singularity structure is, is usually, they have point singularities at corners in the domain, and such functions can be optimally approximated using wavelets. So typical solutions are sparse in a wavelet basis, and one can realize this uh, sparsity um, in this uh, algorithm to solve this PDE. Um, here's just some, some literature. So the first work that has uh, exploited this is by Cohen, Dam and De Voor. And then there have been several extensions of, of this uh, type of algorithms for wavelets and elliptic PDEs, um, which extended the, the framework also to, to cover redundant systems like frames. And um, what is very nice about, about these algorithms is that not only they allow to, to uh, solve elliptic PDEs with wavelets in optimal complexity, but that they also provide a sort of a black box. Um, so, so once you have a problem, a PDE with a variational form, which is uh, coercive and continuous with respect to a certain Hilbert space, and you have a frame of this Hilbert space, which means that the Hilbert space norm can be characterized by a weighted sum of the l of the frame coefficients. Plus, if the Galerkin matrix, if I, if I um, make the ansatz that I write my solution and the test functions as linear combinations of the frame elements, is in a certain sense almost diagonal, so it has a very strong off-diagonal decay, 
And if typical solutions of the PDE can be optimally approximated in this frame, then one, one can use this framework in order to construct algorithms which, which uh, converge optimally. And now the first motivation um, for this project is that, um, well, in, in computational harmonic analysis, many new types of frames or bases have been constructed. For instance, well, curvelets, shearlets, ridgelets, and so on. And uh, in terms of approximating, for example, anisotropic singularity structures or uh, oscillatory patterns, they clearly outperform wavelets. And so the question is, can these new systems, can they, can they be also used to develop adaptive solvers for certain PDEs which outperform wavelets? So that's the first motivation. And uh, the second motivation comes from a, a, a different research project that I'm evolved in jointly with uh, Chris Schwab and, and Ralf Hiptmeier, and this concerns the numerical solution of kinetic transport equations. So um, kinetic transport equations in the, uh, here they, uh, describe the stationary phase space distribution of uh, a radiative energy, U, and this U depends on location in space and on a direction. And um, the dynamics of, of this uh, energy density is described by free transport, by absorption, by external sources, and by a scattering operator, which describes uh, interaction with a surrounding medium. And this uh, scattering operator is typically modeled by an integral operator in the uh, angular variable with a typically nice kernel K. And uh, the solution of such kinetic transport equations are the numerical solution is quite challenging. Um, first of all, because we are dealing with a moderately high dimensional problem. Second, due to the nature of, of the, the, this uh, differential operator which describes uh, free transport, so if we go back here, this operator only requires u to be smooth in direction s. So in particular, line singularities can be transported along rays. So the solutions might be singular, might, might, might be discontinuous in direction s, so line singularities can occur. And third, the equation is hyperbolic, so it's not an elliptic problem, and therefore, if I discretize with wavelets or with finite elements, I will get an ill-conditioned linear system. And this actually is a bottleneck for large-scale simulations. Um, now, let's observe uh, that uh, these two problems, they actually only concern the discretization in X. So, the, what we will do is, we, we try to find a, an optimal discretization of this equation only in the spatial unknown, and then we will uh, combine with, say, a collocation, um, strategy or a tensor product construction to solve the full radiative transport equation. So let's just start by considering uh, the equation just as an equation in X, and let's for the moment ignore scattering. We will uh, come back to, to solving the full radiative transport equation later on. Um, so let's consider this simple linear transport equation. So the first goal is to devise uh, discretizations for this transport equation, which basically is, is, is capable, which is which are capable of, of of achieving the same nice properties that wavelets achieve for elliptic equations. And uh, a key problem here is that this discretization should also be capable of approximating discontinuous solutions. So if uh, a singularity is transported along a ray, I will get 
a solution which, with aligned discontinuity, and if I try to approximate such a solution using wavelets or using FEM, I will get some, well, very moderate, um, very moderate convergence rates, best end term approximation rates. Uh, also, one cannot really use anisotropically refined meshes um, to resolve these, uh, these singularities because for solving the full kinetic transport equation, I would have to, to uh, use different meshes for every direction, and later on we have to combine them, and this would uh, destroy this approach. So we want to have one system, basically, which, which works for all directions, so which is capable of approximating this type of functions for any direction of the singularity. So this is the, the first goal. Okay, so let's start. Uh, the first thing that we have to do is we have to find a variational formulation of our problem. And one way to do, to do this um, is just by uh, squaring this operator. So I, I just formulate this uh, transport equation in this variational form. So as test functions, I will, I will uh, so I will, I will apply this, this operator A to the test functions, and um, on the right-hand side I will also test with A times V, and um, the energy space of this, uh, of this variational problem is the Hilbert space of all L2 functions, such that the directional derivative in direction S is also in L2. So this is an anisotropic Sobolev space. And uh, one can show quite easily, actually, that um, the first point that we need in order to, to, to make this machinery developed by uh, Cohen, Damen, and Devoir work um, is satisfied. So we have a variational formulation, and this variational formulation with respect to this Hilbert space is coercive and bounded. Yes, one would have to incorporate boundary conditions, or one can also enforce it weakly by a penal, uh, penalty functional, which is what we will actually do. Because yes, you will, you will need inflow boundary conditions, that's true, thanks. Uh, I forgot to, to, of course, yeah. yeah. But in our uh, code, we, we enforce them weakly. Okay, so now we have our variational formulation. Let's turn to the discretization. Um, and uh, we will, it will turn out that for this type of PDEs, richlets are the optimal thing to do. So um, we have already heard about richlets, so therefore I will just uh, keep this short. So basically, a richlet frame is, um, consists of of functions which are uh, low pass in one direction and oscillatory in the other direction, and um, they are only scaled. They are only scaled in the uh, oscillatory direction. So at scale j, I will get I will get such an element which has oscillations of frequency two to the j, which has a width around two to the minus j, and the length is unaltered, so there is no dilation in, 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 this, in this variable. And um, in order to achieve directionality, these elements are rotated, are rotated in two to the j directions, and, and using this construction, one can build frames from that. So just... Uh, Okay, so, so one can also replace the rotations by shearings, by shears, which is more convenient for an implementation. So if we define this anisot so basically we have wavelet-like systems with anisotropic dilations. So we only dilate in, we only scale in the first component and not scale in the other component. And then we make up for this lack of scaling in the second component by also putting in rotations or in this definition by putting in shear matrices, matrices to, to achieve directionality. So using this one can uh, construct frames for, for the full domain for R2. 
not yet for general domains, but uh, we are quite close actually to, to achieving this. Um, and now we want to investigate the properties of, of such richlet frames for, for these transport, for these linear transport equations. Okay, so the first thing that one can show is that once we have a richlet frame, then this energy norm that we have can be characterized by a weighted L2 norm of the coefficient sequence. And this holds not just for one direction, but for every direction. So for, for every uh, transport direction, we have stability of these richlet systems in the energy norm. And this is the first, uh, and this is, this is the second point that, that we needed. And actually it can be shown that richlets are essentially unique among multi-scale systems which are capable of doing that. So if one uses wavelets or if one uses curvelets or any other system that is, uh, that at least that I know of, then one, one can construct counterexamples, one can construct functions um, which are in H1S. And for instance, when, when one uh, makes a curvelet decomposition of this function, one can just change the phase of the curvelet coefficients, not the absolute value, and all of, the sudden, all of a sudden the function will not be in H1S anymore. So one can construct counterexamples. So essentially, richlets are the only discretization that, that uh, yield a stable formulation for, for this problem. Okay, so the next point is, uh, now we have a stable formulation in richlets, so we can precondition this, uh, this linear system. And now we want to know when we, when we make a richlet ansatz to solve a linear transport equation, um, is the, ma the Galerkin matrix that I get, um, does it have sufficient off-diagonal decay? And to this end, uh, Albert and Damen and Devor introduced the concept of compressibility of a matrix. And compressibility essentially means that if I have an, like an, an, a doubly infinite matrix, um, I can just keep order two to the i elements and in, in every column, and then the matrix, the error that I make in the L2 operator norm decays like two to the minus sigma i. So, so one can set many, many coefficients to zero and still get a decent approximation. And um, one can also show that uh, this compressibility property holds when we discretize such a transport equation in richlets. So up to some, some technical conditions, we, we also have this result. Lastly, um, we, uh, I mentioned that uh, solutions may develop line singularities, and also here one can show that using richlets, one can approximate them at an optimal rate, namely as quickly as if the singularity wasn't even there. Okay. And... Um, Putting together all these results, um, we can just uh, go to the to the work of, of, of Albert, Damen, and, and Devor, and uh, we can state the main theorem if we have such a transport equation, and the solution has a, a singularity, so it is, is discontinuous along a line. Then one can come up with an algorithm which uh, computes in n flops an approximation with an optimal approximation rate uh, um, of order n to the minus 1 divided by 2 if the solution is cn smooth apart from such a line singularity. So, and this is optimal. Okay, and now, okay, the proof basically follows from, uh, so we have verified, in, so the, the proofs are actually quite involved, but we have verified these four points, and then we can, we can just use this uh, adaptive wavelet algorithm and, and, and just use it on, on richlets for, for this problem. So let's just look at uh, one instructive numerical experiment. So let's just solve uh, this transport equation with a discontinuous right-hand side. So then the solution will also have a line discontinuity along this line and along that line. And 
what we actually see in our algorithm is that uh, the solution that is computed by using this richlet discretization converges exponentially to the solution, even though there is a discontinuity. We have exponential convergence. And, and uh, this is, of course, in sharp contrast to what we would get with finite elements. So with finite elements, we would get something like n to the minus one half, or with wavelets. With richlets, in this case, we get something like exponential of minus gamma times n to the delta of power, so which is, of course, uh, orders of magnitude uh, better from an asymptotic point of view. Um, so, okay, maybe what uh, one thing that I should uh, comment on is uh, that um, this should be regarded as a, as a first step of using new multi-scale systems for the discretization of PDEs. Um, so the, the implementation is not easy. Um, in particular, we need a better constructions of richlets on bounded domains. So for the moment, we, our code is capable of incorporating inflow boundary conditions, but uh, we had to use some tricks on that and deviate a little bit from the theory. But um, the construction of, of, of curvelets and richlets and shearlets on bounded domains is uh, a subject of ongoing work jointly with Gitter Kutinjok, Jackie Ma, and Philip Peterson. And we are actually quite close to, to, to being able to, to construct shearlets and, and richlets and so on on bounded domains and really uh, enforce boundary conditions also strongly. So let's just have an example of, of a solution of the full radiative transport equation. So uh, we have here uniform scattering, and we, um, we solved the full radiative transport equation using a collocation strategy. So we solved the linear transport equation for uh, a set of, of directions and then assembled them back and, and incorporated also the scattering operator. And we did this collocation strategy in a sparse way, uh, which, which also mitigates the curse of dimensionality. And what is nice about this approach is that this richlet discretization has an automatic preconditioner built in. So in particular, if, if one computes this in parallel, so for each direction, uh, I distribute the, the solution of the linear transport equation to a processor. And the number of, of, of iterations, of Richardson iterations, is independent of the resolution. And this is not the case for other discretizations, like SUPG or so on. And this is a bottleneck in, 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 in really large-scale uh, parallel implementations. Here, this is not an issue. So, OK, so here is some, some literature. Um, I think I'm out of time, right? Two three, minutes. Two, three minutes. So then let me just uh, briefly comment also on, uh, on a related equation, namely the Boltzmann equation. So this is joint work with Ivan von Ralf Hiptmeier and Simon Pintarelli at ETH. And the Boltzmann equation is also a kinetic transport equation, so we also have this uh, linear transport operator pop up. And basically it uh, describes a um, well, it gives a mesoscopic description of a many-particle system. Um, so it, it describes uh, the one-particle density of, of a particle system. And, um, well, it's, it's a time-dependent equation. It's, it has this transport term. It also has a, a scattering term, which describes um, the collision of two particles. And uh, this, scattering op uh, this, this collision operator is, is really complicated. Um, so, so it's very challenging to solve this, this Boltzmann equation efficiently. And in recent work, we, we have developed a discretization in V, in velocity, which uh, to a certain extent allows uh, a somewhat efficient and, and very accurate computation of this collision operator. And moreover, it, it, gives, uh, it, it also conserves um, um, energy, momentum, and mass, and yields to, to an entropy-stable scheme. So, so in the velocity v, we have, uh, we have found a, a, 
a good discretization for this collision operator. And also here it would be of interest to um, incorporate uh, richlets in, in uh, the spatial variable because our discretization is, is spectral in velocity and converges spectrally and uh, therefore it would be interesting to also have a spectrally convergent uh, discretization in space. Um, Okay, here is just uh, one video of, of the Boltzmann equation solved with our uh, discretization in velocity. So this describes the um, particle density and the coloring de de describes the temperature of, of this uh, gas. And so also here, in future work, we will, uh, we will investigate the use of richlets for the spatial discretization. Here is some uh, further literature. And so basically this concludes my talk. So I, I have just presented one instance of problems where one can use new kinds of discretizations and, and achieve results and, and proof results, at least, that cannot be, be proven by far with conventional discretization methods. And now the challenge is to make these discretizations also efficient. So we have an implementation which is also available for free for the radiative transport equation, which uh, is also, um, which is also uh, competitive in terms of efficiency, but it uh, deviates uh, somewhat from the theory. And what we would like to do in the long run is to, to really get uh, nice constructions of shearlets and ridgelets on bounded domains, which are piecewise polynomial, and which also allow for efficient quadrature, for efficient uh, and, and for efficient assembly of, of, of uh, the Galerkin matrix. And this is still a long way to go, uh, but I think uh, a very promising field to, to kind of combine harmonic analysis and numerics. So that's all. Thanks for your attention.